The Infinite Looks panel is an incredible tool that gives you the ability to explore a multitude of color options for every single image of yours. In fact, it provides millions of variations organized in a logical and intuitive way to help you find the right color grade for your work. Let's take a look at the interface to show you just how it works. Once we've opened up Infinite Looks panel within the visualizer itself, what we want to do is make sure that on the right hand side at the bottom, we click on Refresh Image because we want to make sure that the image that's loaded in Photoshop is actually loaded within the visualizer. Now, if you have Infinite Texture Panel, it actually comes within the same visualizer, so you can have access to both of them within one convenient panel. Now, let's take a look at the interface. So here we have a grid, which you notice with one solid image on the middle and 12 smaller images surrounding it. In the middle, we have a reference point, which has a very generic and random color grade applied to it. And the reason for that is all the other 12 images and previews located around it are based on this specific preview. Now, here's how it works. Let's say that, you know, we actually come over here to the right hand side and we see this color slider here on randomness. What this means is that every time it generates 12 different previews, it's going to be completely random. And the reason for that is if whether or not you know exactly what direction you want to go, whether it's warmer tones or cooler tones, or you want to explore the different options available to you, since there are millions of different options, this gives both people the mindset and the ability to do that. So now that I notice that, you know, I'm seeing a couple of images a little bit warmer, some are a little bit cooler, some have a green and magenta spectrum, it goes in every direction. And now we can steer the wheel and decide what direction we want to go in. I really like this warmer look, but I want to explore more within that color spectrum. How do I do that? Well, the randomness slider here also, also has the ability to change the parameters. So in case I want something more similar, I'm going to bring it all the way down here. And what happens next is that it generates 12 different options in a warmer palette. And this answers the question, well, how can I explore different colors within certain palettes? Even cooler, and I should say warmer, is on the right hand side to that is a contrast slider which means that if you're trying to find images that also match the contrast of this initial preview, I can bring that down as well. And it gives me the option to match contrast as well as color. Even cooler is that on the top, we have a preserved skin tone slider. So in case you don't want to mask a color grade to ensure the skin tones are kept, we have three different options of off, medium, or max. And then what this does is you'll notice that the color grades themselves don't apply to the skin tones. And it also doesn't apply to other colors similar to skin tones for the moment. However, if you want to see how these specific colors look on your image, on this specific image, how can we actually add it to the image? Well, that's really simple. I'm going to hover over the center here. I'm going to explore these options and icons. The first one on the right hand side is add. And that simply actually adds this color grade to your image. And you'll notice the preview right away generate. If you actually want to say, add one of these other 12 options, we can actually hold option or alt and click on each of them. And then what this does is it gives me the ability and the power to see what these specific images or what these specific looks look like when applied to the images. And that makes it really powerful. The other option here is that Let's say we actually bring, say, the top right here to the center as a reference point, and we want to see what that looks like on the image itself. If I click on Add, it's going to actually add it on top and stack. Instead of doing that, I'm going to hit Replace. And that's what the Replace function does for me. The next one here, Reshuffle, will simply just reshuffle all these parameters around the main image. And the next one here on the left is Add to Favorites. Yes, that's right. We actually have favorites. Now, the favorites themselves, you'll notice, are actually going to be in this flyout menu here. I'm going to increase my slider here really quick. And if I go ahead and say add favorite, it's going to generate under the favorites. And I can name this to whatever I want and say teal, blue, green, because I don't know exactly what color it is, but I like it. And every time I want to run it or use it, I'm just going to click on it. And it generates and brings it back to the center again. And you can see here I have other favorites that I've applied too. So I can use that as a starting point in case I actually want to use that 
for other images. And just like that, you can transform so many different images really rapidly, which makes it amazing. The other great part I like about Infinite Looks Panel is that once the layer itself is actually placed within the layer stack, I can change my opacity, I can change the blend modes, and then every single time that I go ahead and add and replace that specific look, it keeps the blend mode and options present in case I want to see and explore how this should look with different opac opacities and blend modes. So just like that, the Infinite Looks panel allows you to really, really gravitate towards finding what your specific style is. And with the truly millions of different options present, there is no other way that I can imagine you exploring such a wide array of colors in a short amount of time.